Judgment Apocalypse Survival Simulation was given to me by the developer themselves, actually. Got an email from them, and uh, I looked at it, and I was like, hey, this is a little like Project Zomboid with kind of a, uh, uh, with a kind of like somewhere between Project Zomboid and RimWorld, right? It's post-apocalypse. There's no zombies, necessarily. Uh, mostly demons. It's basically more of the, the occult uh, demons. Uh, you'll have uh, hellhounds, all that kind of stuff. So it's basically hell on earth post-apocalypse, city builder, uh, base building, survival, etc. Uh, I now have like about three hours into the title, and so far it seems pretty good. It's, it's a pretty rough around the edges. Some parts of it does feel like early access. Uh, for example, some elements of the UI don't feel like they're necessarily fleshed out but as much as they could be. Uh, like when you click on something, like a, for example, a pop-up, it says, do you want to do this or this? Uh, and you click one of the options, it doesn't actually highlight whenever you click it. You know, usually you click a button, it usually kind of reacts to it, it doesn't do anything. It just kind of, dis the, the dialogue window just kind of disappears. So there's like little quirks like that here and there that kind of makes it feel a little unpolished in terms of the UI. Uh, now outside of that, there's a lot to learn in the game. There's a lot of like small things to, to manage, but if you've played a city builder, uh, strategy, base builder, whatever, uh, You'll, you're probably used to basically managing, having different layers, especially several different layers uh, strewn across uh, various different features. So let's actually go ahead and continue uh, my current save game. Uh, this one here, I'm on day six. This is my my uh, my, my little base. Uh, let's see, where do we start? Upper left corner, you see this little uh, like pager looking thing? Uh, that is your date and time. It's basically it's like a GPS uh, date time, uh, atomic clock type thing. Uh, you can, uh, just like any other city builder, or you could basically speed time up if you want to, or you could slow it down or deposit all together. Uh, across the top, that's where you have your tools there. Uh, basically all your different functions and everything. So if we go to N, this is essentially just tells you kind of what the next steps should be for your first chapter, right? So in this case, it's lo locate master a Aether's, uh, Aether's shrine in the Southeast. Uh, and so it's okay, so you want to do that, you would hit M, and you'd kind of back off and you would say, okay, to the southeast, so it's gotta be somewhere around here. So you probably need to send out a uh, uh, a crew to go and explore that area in order to actually get it. But before we go there, because we will do some of that, um, we gotta keep moving here. Inventory, this basically shows everything that you have. Some things I've, where I've scavenged from various uh, like uh, old campsites. Uh, some things I actually made myself. Metis, I, I actually, and the, the, for example, the drink of water, I actually uh, pulled up out of the well that I built. Um, this particular well is actually running low. <clears throat> it doesn't actually tell me that the water is running low, but it did give me a notification that said, hey, your water is running low, but nowhere on it does it say that. So I don't know if that means my drinking water levels are low or that the well is almost dry. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, over here with TAS, TAS, this is pretty simple. Uh, a little uh, UI that pops up. You basically click on like chop trees and you just highlight area, chop trees, boom. And that's it. And they're gonna go chop those trees. We'll speed things up a little bit. Uh, and then of course, uh, let's see, this is yeah, colony management. This basically just kind of tells you a little bit of the, some of the things that you have uh, going on in your colony right now. Show task, shows you everything that's going on. It's basically a combat log for everything that's happening. Uh, as well as everything that's queued. You see all these things, quarry stone over here. I have a bunch of, excuse me. I have a bunch of things that are queued up right now. But they're not working on it just yet because they have other things that have taken priority. Uh oh, what is this? Food is running out. I have somebody that's cook cooking constantly. No, you know, you know what? No, I don't. Um, let's go and pause it actually because because <laughs> they will lose health super fast. Uh, over here, build. This is very simple. Build. Click on this. You go through and build any one of these things that you want if you have the resources to do so. Um, I'm not going to worry about any of these just yet. And then research. This is all the stuff I've researched so far. There's five different tabs, base craft, weapons, cults, and rituals. Uh, occult and rituals seem pretty similar, but once you start getting down towards the bottom, it's like, okay, now I get it. This is like more like a, a camp-wide buffs or people buffs. Uh, and then like the occult, this is more like weapons and offensive abilities and all that good stuff. So it's basically defensive and offensive, um, which actually that's not even true because occult also has armor. So uh, yes, these are spells and debuffs and buffs. And these are basically all of your, uh, you may be more of the physical or oriented things, uh, damage, uh, is the protection spell, holy magic, holy armor, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, In order to get some of these unlocks, and even with weapons and craft and all this stuff, you have to actually research. So I have like science research. I have 161 out of 60. Oh, well, that's 60 for unlocking this. Uh, so right now I could actually go through and, oh, I can't unlock that. I need 240 to unlock that. And I need research materials for this. I'm not finding research materials yet, but I'm sure I'll come across some eventually. Uh, over here on the craft, it's the same thing. You know, how many research, how many uh, uh, um, research, science research 
units do you have? And you could turn around and spend that on giving things. I'm pretty much pretty much stopped here because I don't have the research materials books. Uh, weapons, I could probably start going down here and stop being a jerk. Probably should do that, actually. Uh, metal weapons, so I can't really go that far. Let's go ahead and... <laughs> we'll come back to that. Uh, and crafting, this is where you go to make all the different individual things that you unlocked via the research tab. Uh, I actually have scrap armor that I have not yet made. Looks pretty good. See health, let's see evasion, 85, evasion, 20, armor, 1, 0, okay. Uh, you have to pay attention to the cell value. The cell value of some of this stuff is actually makes it worth it to make a lot of. So, for example, bricks. Uh, bricks have a cell value of 12. Stones have a cell value of 1. Clay have a cell value of... Let me see. Uh, stones, wood, clay, inventory. See, wood has a cell value of 2. Uh, stones have a cell value of 1. <laughs> so, uh, if, you do manage to, if, if you do manage to get tons of resources, you could go through and make... Um, a bunch of uh, of bricks and come out a little bit on top. You know, it means like it's like you need two per right, so it's like two, then four, uh, five, six, uh, like eight. So it basically costs like eight, eight cell value, if you will. Uh, and then what the bricks end up being uh, cell value of twelve. This is this is good for whenever somebody comes around uh, and then you need to barter with. Uh, like a trader or something like that. Uh, now, you notice that he said, oh, we're running out of food. Well, let's go ahead and actually uh, reprioritize that. Down here at the bottom left, you can see this is a combat log. Uh, and then here's all your individual people that you have on your team. So if I click on one and then click on priorities, it's going to show me all the priorities here. Now, if you played Oxygen Not Included, you're very familiar with this screen. This is where you go and you basically say, okay, I want to prioritize this over this or this over this. I have most people prioritizing searching debris over anything else because the debris is pretty far away and it's easier just to get a whole gang of people over there to actually go through it, pick you know, pick and loot it, and then uh, come back. But we're pretty much done with that, so we're going to move these this thing back. There's only one more site left on, on, on my particular map here. Um, crafting, let's move this thing back. I mean, they're not going to do it if there's nothing, none of that to do. But nobody here is set up for cooking, which is interesting. Where am I seeing? Where am I not seeing? This farm. Uh, I wonder if that's under crafting. Fetch water, rituals. I haven't actually seen cooking, huh? Chop trees, patrol. Interesting. Interesting. Well, craft. Two people are on crafting as the number one thing. This guy's on 80%. Um, and he's at 80% primarily because I actually went through and gave him an upgrade of crafting on top of his already uh, already had a crafting boost of like 60%. So now he has 80%, uh, making that 180%, <laughs> so I'm actually going to um, the next time he gets another upgrade, basically which is just pure experience, right? For each individual person, uh, I could go through and upgrade him some farther so he could uh, craft things much more quickly. Uh, and let's see, Bertha's already basically in the rituals. She's basically my occultist. Um, some of them actually already have, like this, she had, she had occult research speed plus 50%, so she basically just became my occultist uh, for, for the most part. Um, and that kind of the way it goes for every, every, every character you get. Some of these you get from missions where it's like, oh, somebody needs your help, you need to go to another area and go and clear out some of these demons, and then you could capture them, or you could uh, uh, save them, and they'll join your crew. Or they say that they might join your crew. 99% of the time they join your crew, so... Um, but yeah, so nobody is actually making food, which is something that they typically do on their own without my assistance. So let's actually go to craft and see. Um, yeah, it's, it's on auto. The A, A equals auto. So that just means that somebody is not, um, not sitting on the crafting table. Let's see, a minimum of 30, maximum of 50. Let's do a max of 100. And that way, if it swings low for some reason, then it's fine. So there you go. Nobody's actually starving. You can see over here, it's like they have their health, nutrition, uh, and energy. I have two beds set up, one right here and one right here. Uh, it's not the most ideal. It looks kind of crowded, but they actually navigate around all this stuff, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> they just kind of navigate around everything, and then they, they go in and they, uh, uh, they'll sleep. Like, I just got to see if going to sleep. And then somebody else will come right, lay it right on top of them to work on the workbench. So whatever works. Uh, yeah, so Steve is, Steve's been sitting, somebody's always been sitting here making food. So I don't know why he gave me that warning. Probably just dropped a little threshold and then just threw up a warning and then probably immediately disappeared. Uh, let's see. I have people going, getting, uh, getting the, uh, the stone, but not quite quick enough because my priority is all over the place. So let's go and take somebody that might be really good at that. Let's see. Is anybody here, like really good at the fencer fast healing star stalwart let's see pistol craft i'm looking for like mining farm speed and i guess vision damage attack gangster huh gangster look at this guy automatic weapons attack speed 15 percent damage 10 percent accuracy minus five percent 
Marksmanship, though, that makes up for the accuracy. Huh, so she gets got an Uzi then. August, get her an Uzi. Uh, Craftsby, 80%. So she's basically a crafter who crafts things. <laughs> That's pretty much her job. And, uh, wait, oh, it's Armand, isn't it? Oh, it's Armand, okay, so. Uh, and he has crafting as the number one thing. So organizing uh, skills and everything is pretty easy. Prioritizing and all that stuff, it's just, there, there ends up being a lot. Especially when you're like, okay, let's go and do this thing. Like, for example, this tree that I told him to cut like two days ago, and they still haven't finished it. <laughs> all right, here we go, perfect. We have to go save somebody. So we click on this here. Somebody's not too far away. Uh, we click on this group, and I have uh, my, my A ladies group, because it used to just be a bunch of ladies. Um, and I actually have uh, five people in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, yeah, those people, and you can have more than one group if you want to, but you can't you can't have overlapping people in each in each group. So I can't have like Armand uh, and uh, and Stan in an A dudes uh, uh, a group, and also be an A ladies. Like he has to be in he has to be in one or the other. They both have to be in one or the other. So you basically right click over here on the map, click on uh, send rescue. Notice again, like I said with the UI, nothing actually clicks. Like it doesn't actually move. There's no toggle. There's no like reaction visually. Whenever you click on a button, it's really kind of strange. Uh, survivors gain a level. So let's click on that. And let's see who's a Steve, the gunslinger, healthy, perceptive, hey, pistols. He's good at pistols. Good max health, vision range. Okay, cool. Should I give him more pistol damage and make him a pistol? Every once in a while, somebody comes around. They have pistols. Let's see quarrying. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, let's go and do it. Pistols. Why not? Try to like min max things. All right, so they're gonna go over here, and then once they're there, we're going to hit M, and now we're in another zone. So now we have our group. I have them all hotkeyed. RTS standard RTS uh, assignments apply. Control one makes a group, uh, and then hitting one will actually activate it. So if I make another group, Control two, I can go Control one here, and then Control two, or, or sorry, just one and two to move people around in separate groups, just by assigning groups to uh, my control keys. And my ones and twos and threes, etc. So, uh, like for example, some of them are range. You can see that they have their range right there. Uh, it's basically just stand. So we'll make stand group two, and we'll make everybody else. Oh, hold on. Let's get these guys over here. All right, stand, get over here, and then we'll get these guys into a group. Good. And then we have basically surround them and just mob, just mob them. Stand, come on, stand, come on, dude. Yeah, shoot that guy. Come on, Stan. All right, so we're still looking for somebody. So we got we got to kind of spread out. Oh, right there, perfect. So we'll get one person on it. Let's get Stan on it. Everybody else is gonna basically we're just gonna mob people. We'll do this. We'll do. Oh, okay. Looks like we have a couple. So boom. While Stan's working on that. Good. And that should be about it. Can't loot this stuff. Can't loot this stuff. You're supposed to be able to loot some things. But not everything, unfortunately. Okay, cool. She's out. So basically highlight them all. Hit F1. They'll all go marching down towards the end. Or towards the, uh, the edge. And then we're done. Super simple. That was an easy mission. I mean, they're all, they've all been pretty easy so far. So loot, sulfur, it's always sulfur. <laughs> all right, so here, here, here's an example of the UI thing I was talking about, right? It says, do you wish to, for the task force to return to base? If I click on yes, or either one, right? It's gonna, it's gonna do the same thing, but it just disappears. There's no, there's just no, like if it like inverted or maybe it filled with green or something like that when you click on it, that would feel better. Like right now, that's, that's the one thing with the UI that makes me feel like, it, it makes it feel unpolished. But I mean, everything else, I mean, it's 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 about like what you'd expect from like a Factorio, RimWorlds, whatever. Like it's just, it's just simple, super simple graphics because all of these is, it, all, it's like a spreadsheet simulator. Like all these people are just basically here. They're all numbers. They're all just doing work. Uh, they're gonna do, you know, basically whatever you ask them to do. Uh, hold on a sec, let's see what Laura has. Laura doesn't have a weapon or she doesn't have armor. I have extra armor laying around, so we'll do that. Uh, she's a priestess actually. That's pretty good because I have well, she doesn't have anything. She can't really do anything, looks like. What's her priorities? Let's see. Laura, is it Laura? Oh, God, I'm forgetting her names already. I think it's Laura. All right, yeah, Laura, you're the noob. Uh, your priorities. Let's go get these people moving. we will do this. Okay, so she's she's a good builder. Awesome. Okay. That works. Nobody's got uh, quarrying up high, so... Is anybody is anybody a good quarrier? Anyone got a miner? Let's see. Oh. 
Trader here. Okay, perfect. This is what I was talking about the bricks, right? A value of 12. Uh, let's see. A feather of, let's see, rare. This is basically like rare armor, a ghillie suit, uh, lucky charm, lucky wear. Has increased accuracy and evasion. And then vine armor, required skill, rare nature armor. So kind of interesting, right? We kind of get into the weird space here with like uh, kind of this this fantasy style of uh, of gameplay. We have demons, and we have a, you know, we have you know ants and, <laughs> and all of this. So it's a pretty pretty interesting combination of things, and it's 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 kind of refreshing. When I first thought, I was like, oh god, it's another zombie simulator, right? It's not at all. So right now, basically, they just run things, right? I've already built I already built a couple things, right? Uh, Basically, I have a wheat field, I have fruit, uh, or vegetables, whatever. Uh, I have sheep. And if you feed the animals, you can feed the animals, sure. They usually do this stuff on their own, actually. The biggest thing right now that I'm missing is that I don't have... Uh, I need... I need werewolf blood. That's right, I need werewolf blood. We should probably do that, actually, since y'all are here. Let's go up here to this question mark where I have a... Boop. Attack. Here we go. Wait, what's that say? Uh, killing the scouting team reduces awareness level, ignoring them or losing fight. Yeah, yeah, so so there is a werewolf here. If you click on it, it says there's two werewolves. Um, I need werewolf's blood to, uh, because somebody, one of my people, May, is actually cursed with, like, a werewolf curse. And the only way to get rid of it is, uh, enemies are approaching. Oh, shit. They're approaching my base while I'm gone. I actually wonder what happens when, it's never happened, actually, so. I'm curious if the game will, like, not progress that side while I'm over here doing this business. I'm over here doing work. Oh, lots of guys. Lots and lots and lots. We have to split these up. You will lose people. They will die. Let's try to get a couple here. Beat, beat them. Come on, come on. Get the hell out. I'm gonna lose people here. Thankfully, you can pause. There goes May. Well, May was the one we were coming here for, and she's dead. <laughs> May have bit off more than I could chew here. Come on. Stan. Get that werewolf, buddy. Come on. Get that other werewolf. She's like done. Can't move her away. Run, 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 run. Minor demon down here. But she'll actually regen, I think, uh, but maybe not in the field, though. Yeah, she's basically done. Uh, I don't have any resources or anything I give to her, so it's basically Stan versus, oh god, two demons? I mean, might as well give it a shot. Oh my god! Whoa, okay, no, 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 no. We're out of here. We are out. Wait, real quick, real quick. You see the little uh, diamonds here? That's their visible area. That's how much they can see. So they can't see into the trees here. Uh, but they can see this area here. This is how you basically, the stealth element of the game if you wanted to. You could do that. Basically march around there. Think, wow, so we, ooh, lost three people there. All right, so we get, I guess we kind of stepped a little outside of our, yeah, let's go back home. Night Owls, death takes, yeah. So the Night Owls is gone because May is dead. <laughs> oh man. All right, let's go back to base here. We have people coming. So because of her Night Owls, uh, she was attracting more demons so you're actually getting jumped more often so we haven't gotten here yet but upper right corner you can see uh this is basically the awareness level right uh, i think it's a percentage a percentage of chance to be attacked every i guess day or every four days i'm not quite sure but basically the higher the number the worse you are the worse off you are this number should actually be dramatically uh uh lower because may is dead and may was the one that was howling all night and drawing all his attention and everything Yes, I know. Yeah. So it's a little unfortunate that that's still there. But skeleton crew now. Uh, <laughs> we don't have that many people, so you're being attacked. Uh, let's see. So thankfully, Laura. Whenever somebody dies, you, they don't necessarily you don't lose their weapons. So I have three clubs that are available now. <laughs> Jesus. Uh oh. All right. So let's go ahead and pull. I can stand. Sharpshooter stand failed me. So you saw the uh, shield as these guys are walking around. Let me go ahead and actually, can I click, click, control, click, can I shift, click? Yep, shift, click, shift, click it is. All right, let's go make those group one. Stan, you're group two. And then we'll pull back a little bit. 
Actually, we'll watch. We'll pull back a lot. Let's stand right here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh god. Okay. Never mind. Turn around. Fight. Turn around. Fight. Uh, shoot. And then you guys. Boom. Uh oh, this might be the end of me here. I mean, stand. So, so, Steve. St uh, ranged people do not have um, much of an ability to. Oh god. To defend themselves from melee, they actually have a lesser chance, I guess, uh, of survival against melee. Please stand. Stand, please. Okay, Laura. Stand. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, Jesus. Wow, the game just suddenly got hard. <laughs> it's, it's. I wonder why. It's because I sent my people to, to their death. That's okay. I have a safe. I have a safe. I could always roll back if I wanted to. But this is good because everybody here should should learn and understand how this game functions and how unforgiving it can be when you do dumb things like that. Uh, unfortunately, though, now with all, all those people, I'm kind of like just sitting here. Just like, I guess we'll just kind of hang out. Weakening room, sure. Uh, awareness generation, minus 10. Well, actually, look. My awareness generation is uh, is one percent, so I basically have free reign over just doing whatever I want until like certain events occur, and then it basically tells me, oh yeah, well now you have to, um, now because of blank event, random event, your awareness generation is uh, is higher. So here we go. An enemy scouting party has been spotted nearby. You should take them out quickly before they spot your base. Killing the scouting party reduces enemy awareness while leaving them, uh, leaving them be raises it. So here's the thing about this. A scouting party is always going to be somewhere else. All of my people are gone. A ladies is made up of Stan. It's just Stan. <laughs> so let's go take Stan. <laughs> and we'll see how he fares over here by himself because you cannot take everyone away from the base. Somebody always has to be there. All right, Stan, this is your moment. Now you can't go any faster than just the double speed when you're in a, an encounter. Oh god, get him, get him, get it. Good, good shots. Good shot, Stan. Oh god, Stan, rip Stan. <laughs> just killing everybody off. Uh, hey, he killed death though. Alright, so we go back here. And now it's just Laura. And uh, I'm actually quite curious. Monster, is there chasing somebody leading on right? Let's see, leading them right into our colony. Oh good. Uh, yes, you. What do we have? Jenny, huh? Where is Jenny? Oh! Jenny, guess what? You're getting... Oh, I can't assign her anything. I wonder if it's because, um, she doesn't have, uh... She's not part of the colony just yet. Well, I can control her at least. You see, minimal, minimal defense in the trees here oh god beat him down please please jenny would you take would you take a, a club or something oh man she's done and this this is the wipe come on come on werewolf go get the werewolf at least nope and my colony is in ruins your base has been destroyed the demons have overwhelmed your forces all hope is lost perhaps another group in another part of the world will fare better look at my stats here this day survived 29. Oh, I thought it was six. Whoops. Oh, survivors. I had six. Uh, demons killed 70. Equipment crafted 13. Map explored 1%. Survivors buried zero. I did seriously just kind of leave them around because apparently you need a priest in order to bury things, which is dumb. Do priests are like, really good with shovels or something? I have no idea. Economy, economic efficiency, 70%. Strongest kill was the werewolf. was probably that last one there. Uh, the nemesis of the hellhound. The damage dealer was Stan. Punching bag was Bertha. Frequent traveler is Bertha. And the survivor was Stan. Good old Stan. Man. Just, uh, too gone. Gone too soon. Now I can go and continue if I wanted to and actually start over with the, uh, uh, with a different, uh, or roll back to a different save here. So this is the save I believe we started on today. Two survivors. Nope, never mind. See, seven survivors. Okay, this is obviously when I was doing better. <laughs> so this is where we'll start and we'll come back here. Oh, this is actually in, uh, in events. This is the event that I lost everybody on. So guess what? We hit the F1 key. And, uh, oh, oh, come on. Look at that. Hit the, <laughs> just smash that F1 key and we're out of here. Done. Yes, please go back to base. 
Uh, actually, no, don't go back to base. Let's go uh, check out this this uh, this quickie more here. We'll go there. We go. Let them go and explore, explore this. See what we get. So, so not all encounters are the kind of encounters that you actually get in and walk around. You can, or you can click auto resolve, and it'll basically just roll the dice and tell you how you did. Look at that. We did good. We did well. Do I want to turn the base? No, not yet. Let's go to the next area here. What is this? Loot, expect here, stone, and water. Uh, let's see over here. We have, oh, that's even more valuable, actually. Uh, significantly more people, but I think it's probably okay. Let's actually go back here. Let's take a lady. So I click there and then go, go over there. Oh, that's right. I forgot there's gonna be attack soon. Well, I don't think that attack will happen so long as we stay out of here. So let's go click on fight this time. Now we're actually in. Now we're in here. I believe this gives us the ability to actually loot things, uh, if, uh, if available. So it is a little bit different. Like you scavenge and whatnot. But I haven't actually seen any of that. I just saw it in a tutorial. <laughs> like these boxes for, yeah, here we go. See, look. Like these, oh, crap. Uh, never mind. Everybody, everybody's focused on one of them. Hellhound. Yes, Hellhound. Reaper. Come on, beat him down. Beat him down. Come on, come on. Best five of seven. Let's go. All right. Good. Stan, you go do that. Uh-huh. Ooh, Werewolf charging in. Good. May is taking a serious beating, actually. Oof, ooh, let's get May out of here. Done. So it looks like that was it. Just destroy those two guys and uh, take the loot. There we go. We got some stuff. Lots of kills. Put, it put me right out, actually. That's kind of... That I wasn't expecting that to be pulled right out. So here we go. They're all going to go back to base. Hopefully... Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, come on, go, 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 go. They should be showing up any second here. You're being attacked. Uh, well, uh, no item available. I don't have any. My people should be showing up. I'll be pretty upset if they don't show up, actually. Let's get back. Let's get back. Let's keep. Oh, God, I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded. Let's go take care of this Reaper here first. The Hellhound. Oh, the Hellhound is running up on us. Oh, so it looks like actually. My people are not going to be here in time. Uh, boy, I wonder what that means, actually. Like, for the game. Like, yeah, these people are going to die for sure. Just slaughtered. Huh. Well, that's really interesting. Because I have five people that are just outside of the base, about to walk in. But the game still counts that as being destroyed. Well, that's something they'll have to note. I don't, I don't agree with that, but I guess I'll have to note that. Very interesting. But overall, my experience so far is this is a lot. It's a lot of setup and a lot of uh, basically what you want to do. Here's what you want to do. You want to get set up. You want to get going. And then you want to make a save about two hours in, two and a half hours in. And that save is going to be your restart save, right? Just like I went back, just like that. Uh, maybe probably a little before that, uh, because there's a lot of real basic stuff that you had to unlock every time you start over. You know, like ba basically, OK, first. First, you got to set up a well, then you got to set up a, a, a log cabin, and then you got to set up a workshop bench. You can do it. It's all this like very repetitive stuff. If you're starting over constantly, it's a lot easier to set that stuff up initially because you can move everything, mind you. So you can't you don't necessarily have to worry about, oh, well, I already settled and all that stuff. And so I can't move anything. No, 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 no. You can move everything after you set it up. So I would recommend going through creating a save about two hours in and then uh, uh, building off from there every time you have to, uh, uh, restart. So, like, when something like this happens, where you're like, no, I got people right outside the gates just gonna come in and smash all these Reapers and everything. Nope. Nope. Base was destroyed. It's gonna give me the same stats it did before. Days survived 28. And that's it. So, that's Judgment. Apocalypse Survival Simulation. Not a bad game. Uh, I'd imagine for people who are into these kinds of things, RimWorld, Factorio, or even Project Zomboid, uh, this game would probably be pretty awesome. Personally, uh, I spent, I mean, I'm like now a little over three hours in, I would say probably about uh, an hour and a half or so, uh, super late last night, just basically watching Netflix on one TV or one monitor, uh, and had this kind of running in the back because the game will essentially run itself. You know, it's like they have, they have tasks and all that. So they basically manage their own tasks and whenever an event occurs, it'll pop up and tell you something's coming and it'll pause the game for you. So it's actually a really great second screen, a second screen game. Uh, and it makes, it makes it kind of a little bit more digestible sometimes the downtime that you have in between events. 
Uh, but even the downtime in between events gives you lots of options and everything to either explore uh, or continue to build or continue to research or whatever, or maybe further uh, micromanage some of your uh, the priorities and everything for your individual uh, uh, characters. So there's a lot of things you can do. I didn't even show you that you can actually customize the uh, each and each character. You can customize their look and their name uh, after you've after they've shown up, which I think is kind of funny. It's like, hey, my name is Stan. No, 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 no. You're 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 Bob now. It's like, nah, I kind of like that. Nah, Bob. Typing it in. <laughs> His name is not Bob. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot more to this game than what I've shown you. Like seriously, this first couple hours is nothing. Look at just look at this screen right here. There's barricades. There's uh, watchtowers. You can set up patrols. Your base can get pretty, pretty extreme. Uh, as as you can imagine, any city builder will allow you. Just think of all the crazy shit you've seen in Factorio, right? Like basically, it's like that, but probably without half the automation. So that's it. The game is called Judgment Apocalypse Survival Simulation. Currently on Steam for $19.99. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Mike V. This is Indie for Breakfast. I will see you guys later.